So traditionally in Tibetan Buddhism, there's a nine point death meditation. There are other meditations you can do on realizing you're going to die. And I do a brief one in the morning that um, this is my last day. So that it's not morbid, it's basically helping me really make the most meaning of the day. I find it motivates me. You can try that. But the nine point death meditation, um, when you really, we've, I've even led death and dying retreats, so you're really spending a lot of time on each of the points. And a lot of people get depressed during this phase, and it's very normal. It's actually a good sign. Because there are times when we're meditating on this that you know, you realize I'm going to die and I don't want to die. Or this person I love is going to die. Or this person. So it's a natural thing. However, it's much more helpful to look at it before we're actually dying. It's like a rehearsal. So that you can figure out now how to get yourself together for that experience. Okay, it's coming. And what happens is we plan for holidays, we plan when we're going to buy our next car, and we plan what we're going to have for dinner. We plan to come here. And those things you don't know if they'll happen. But death is going to happen. Okay. So let's look at, we're going to look at a few of these points. And you can notice also when uncomfortable things come up in the meditations. Some of you have notebooks or some of you jot down, but it's a good place to start, start the work, is to look at what's, what's going on here. Why am I so uncomfortable with this or that? Gives you insights about yourself. So you can close your eyes if you like. We'll bring the focus inward. There's three main headings in the traditional nine-point death meditation. Death is certain. The time of death is uncertain. And the only thing that really benefits you at the death time is your spiritual practice. Those are the three main headings. Okay, so let's look at death is certain. Let's contemplate these points a little more deeply. There's no power in the universe that will stop death from coming to you. Let's think about this. There's no power in the universe that will stop death coming to you. How do you think you're going to stop it? Just look at your escape hatches. Where do you run to when you get afraid? What happens if you have a medical appointment about something that could be serious? What are your coping mechanisms to deal with around that appointment? Just contemplate these as well as who's the oldest person you know alive right now? Who do you know who has lived forever? And what about the greatest thinkers in the world, like Einstein? Did he find a way out of death? Neil Armstrong walked on the moon, and he died. The most powerful people on the planet still die. The most 
amazing creative beings on the planet died, like Mozart, John Lennon. They did not figure out a way around death. The richest people on the planet cannot bribe their way out of death. Try to focus individually in these different situations slowly, Fig figuring out how is it that someone's escaped death? How will I be able to do it? Is there a way I can do it? If you come to the realization, the feeling you cannot, focus your energy and your concentration there. Mother Teresa died. Jesus died. Even the Buddha died. Just think, how is it that I am immune from this situation? And just think, I am definitely going to die. There's nothing I can do to prevent my death coming. I am definitely going to die.
in 100 years, everyone in this room will be gone. And there's no way we'll be able to change that. And every moment, you're another moment closer to death. We're another Saturday closer to death right now. You're another weekend closer. another morning closer. And time is slipping, slipping away. Your birth was as if you were dropped out of a plane without a parachute. Every moment we're closer and closer to our death. Just contemplate the fleeting nature of your life. Every moment. Every bite of food you eat, you're a bite closer. Every step you take, you're a step closer to death. How much time do you spend actually practicing Dharma? In a sense, practicing Dharma could be keeping your mind away from delusion, away from negative patterns when they arise, as well as a formal practice of meditation, study, reading, retreat. Just evaluate for a moment how much time a day do you spend and how that translates to how much time in your life. If you live to be 75, how much time, how many years do you think you'll have for your formal practice?
not a lot of time generally. Okay. So from these points, under death is certain, make a determination. I must get to my practice. I must spend time and either develop a practice or have a consistent practice. This is what will be there when you're dying, your practice. So let's look at the time of death as uncertain. The time of death is uncertain. Harder point to realize. Because a lot of us understand we'll die. We think it will happen when we're old. We even say that, when I'm old. More realistic to say, if I live to be old. Think about this. We live in a world system. And there's an unspecified time span. So think of all the different people you know who have died and all their different ages. You have no idea when you're going to die. No idea. Could be today. Certainly hope not, but it could be today. So think about the many things that are out there that tend to contribute to your death. So few things really keeping you alive. It's literally just the difference between an exhalation and an inhalation. So there are natural disasters that kill people. Car accidents, plane crashes, many, many diseases, viruses, bacteria. People die from food poisoning. And mismedication. Reflect on all the different ways out there that people die. Violent deaths, on and on.
Another point is your body is very delicate, which contributes to your death. So it's not an earthquake that kills people, it's the buildings that fall down on their head that kill them. In a car accident, your body is much weaker than the materials of the car. You go in the hospital for a minor procedure, and people die all the time from something else, from a complication. Contemplate how delicate, how fragile the body is, how susceptible it is to disease, infection, complications that kill you. So just think, I am definitely going to die, and I have no idea when that will be. I am definitely going to die, and I have no idea when that will be. And if you can, if you feel like it, generate a determination from these points that not only must I practice and will I get my practice together, but I'll do it now. No more excuses, no more putting it off. I'll do it now. So the last main heading, what best benefits us at the death time is our spiritual practice. Just think about your, your possessions. Are they any help to you when you're dying? You can't take them with you. Sometimes we are very attached to them. It can cause us torment. What about friends and family? They can certainly make us more comfortable if they know our practices, they can help us with that. Often they don't. And sometimes they're pulling on us, asking us not to die. We worry about their grief, their pain. Sometimes they're crying over us. 
Our body is of no help. It's the thing, it's the reason we're dying often. Just have a look at those three points, your possessions, your friends and family, and your body, and really evaluate how much of a help they will be to you at the death time. So from this point, this main heading, see if you can make a determination, not only will I practice, practice now, but I will practice well. I will create and continue a consistent, rich practice that will be there for my mind when I'm dying. Please relax. 